reduction. A little reduction. A reduction, yeah, yeah. and the, the scar is a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know about the scar. Have you seen a plastic? I think it looks a whole lot better. Yeah, boy, it's not nearly as swollen up as no, it was. Uh -uh. You see a little It's this constant barrage of chemotherapy, so patients have a lot of anxiety when they initially start, and uh, I think they're worried about what's going to happen to them, and how they're going to feel, and how bad is it going to be, and am I going to be able to work, am I going to be able to function, am I going to be able to do my job? Those kind of things are all pretty prominent, and of course, since I've never had chemotherapy, I can't tell them from my personal experience what it's going to be like. Just, you'll see it um, come up through here. Okay. It'll be more red. See? Oh, okay. There you go. That's your blood. There's a certain population of older women who get breast cancer who have very small tumors, good prognosis, and they just treat them with hormone therapy, and that's their only treatment. When you move into women who are younger, women who are perimenopausal, women who are premenopausal, those are the women who tend to get more aggressive breast cancers. Those are the women who are going to get chemotherapy. They're going to get aggressive chemotherapy. They're going to have to have a lot of support. They're going to get the dose dense therapy. They're going to get the Herceptin. So they have a lot more involved plan of action and a treatment plan. Um, I think all of us who practice oncology have a vested interest in taking care of patients. Our idea isn't just to, you know, be little chemotherapy machines. I think that every person's unique. Every person needs to feel like they're in an environment where they're taken care of because this is a life-altering experience for them. And so from the time they see the doctor, they have to feel like if they have any questions, that all their questions can be answered, that we're attentive to what they've looked up on the internet net or what they're what they're concerned about that we take care of problems that they encounter with their chemotherapy no um, we have to actually keep continuing to check for a blood return with adriamycin mm -hmm. because it can actually burn your skin if it goes outside the vein It is hard to do that because you know you're ultimately going to make someone feel really bad and you're going to make them sick. And you may make their blood count slow, you may give them diarrhea or nausea, um, but you know that ultimately what you're doing is going to benefit the patient in the long run. My circle of friends has been, um, wow, I have emails every day. When I go log on, there's probably 30, 40 from people I've met through my work all over the country. Um, my children are close by. I get to see my grandson every day, or just about. And I don't think I could do it without them. There's no difference. But I would have to say that I have seen it more in the right breast. I don't know if that's just... The choices today have become a lot more uh, varied also in how that's going to be managed. The, the data is very good for smaller breast cancers. 
to remove them locally and conserve the remainder of the breast. In the 70s, that was the exact opposite. The uh, philosophy was one for more and more radical procedures. I'm not nervous. Uh, strangely enough, I'm not nervous at all. It's, um, there is no other option. There's no other choice. So you're not sitting there doubting what you're about to do. I'm looking forward to having it done so that I have the peace of mind knowing that the bad chemo is done, it's been effective, and then the chemo that's expected afterwards, there's no side effects, it's more of a preventative stage. So I'm ready to get beyond the, ca the cancer right now because it's still in my system. I want it out. So I'm, I'm really not nervous. I'd have done it today if they'd said, come on, let's go get it done.